this episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Spitballing Podcast. We at the Sloopcast are thrilled to finally be talking about baseball with our new sponsors, the Spitballing Podcast. We know that we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the world of Ohio State, but baseball is in full season right now. Uh, and we are proud to introduce you to your new favorite MLB podcast. Take a listen to the Spitballing Podcast by our very own Sloop Cat, Austin. Hey, hi, Austin. Wave to everyone. Wave to everyone, Austin. Hi. <laughs> That's him down in the live chat there. Um, and his buddy, Reed. Uh, Reed is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there will be shenanigans. Uh, there will also be unbiased MLB coverage from someone who has grown up around the game as well as someone who is brand new to the game. Uh, that is the Spitballing Podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many other podcast streaming platforms. Once again, that is the Spitballing Podcast. Uh, spitballing is one word, and there's no G at the end. What's How was that time, Austin? How was that time, Austin? Any better that, than that was, four out of ten? Come on. Come on. All right. Seven. You oh. get sevens, Jared. What did, what what do the Russian judges give me? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. All right, I'll take it. That's not bad from a Russian judge. <laughs> well, Russians don't like boys from Ohio. No. Oh. What the hell, Stuart? It's Austin's job to be mean to me. Is that one out of ten? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the but it's also the third finger, so maybe it's a three out of ten. Fuck you, Jared, out of ten. <laughs> All right, let's get All right, started. Jared. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast Editing today, Kyle. I'm all right, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, I'm about to sit down, and I am sitting down. I have sat down, and I'm about to record a podcast with uh, with Kyle. So, how bad could things be? Well, now you're setting expectations, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to go downhill already. <laughs> okay. Way to go, Kyle. Just, just, you know, I, this is what happens. I pay a compliment to Kyle. I pay a compliment to Kyle. And his reaction is to say, oh, well, now the show's going to be bad. It's like I'm not allowed to be a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Let's get into it, Jared. Uh, Monday's episode, we talked about the defense here today. We're going to talk about the offense, the lovely, lovely, lovely offense here. So we get to hear from Coach Day what he has to say. And yeah, let's let's get and Kevin Wilson, actually. So let's a little, little bit of Kevin right. Wilson. Yep. It's a, it's a Ryan right Day in. podcast, a little bit of Kevin Wilson sprinkled on top. Yeah, let's jump it right into this. I think the biggest thing for this offense, it's not so much who Ohio State lost. It's well kind of what Ohio State lost. It's not so much the top two receivers that Ohio State lost. It's more of the tight end. The tight end position, I think, is one position on the, this offensive um, group that a lot of people are really talking about. Uh, so Coach Day talks about uh, Cade Stover here, um, mentioning he's back at tight end now after spending some time at linebacker. Uh, he said moving forward, uh, Stover saw that he has a huge ceiling at tight end. Uh, what Stover will tell you is that he wants to bring that defensive mindset and intensity to the offense. Yeah, and, and just to cheat in our notes a little bit, Kyle, uh, Kevin Wilson, when talking about Cade Stover, said they didn't ask him to come back to tight end. Um, it was his choice. Uh, he's pushing 260 pounds and brings a blocking presence for sure. If the move is good in Stover's heart, he'll be fine. We'll see it. Wilson is very happy to have him back. Um, I'm, Kevin I'm Wilson. Want, oh. Kevin Wilson, who's so, also the tight was, ends coach. What was the what was the weight, Jared? Two sixty. 
260 and Jeremy Ruckert was at 249. Yeah. Yeah. That's bl- blocking presence. <laughs> uh, Kevin Wilson, looking- by the way, also uh, gave a lot of pra- praise to Joe Royer and G Scott. Um, he even said that G Scott is doing as well as anybody with his blocking fundamentals. Which, like, that's that's the huge... Like, we know G. Scott can catch the ball and run routes and get open, right? We know this. Uh, but doing as well as anybody with his blocking fundamentals. Which, if I can... If we're interpreting what that means. Not saying he's good at doing as well as anyone in blocking. With his blocking fundamentals. So, if I'm going to interpret that, it's... He's doing as well as he can for the size that he is. Mm-hmm. I think is how I interpret that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think we're going to see... I don't know. It's it's interesting how, just trying to think forward, the type of offensive scheme that Ohio State's going to do this year, or are they pretty much going to... What we're going to see a lot of from last year, minus maybe not as much of a tight end presence. Maybe we'll start seeing more four wide. Will we see two tight ends like we did periodically last year? Maybe not as much, but I mean, we'll, we'll see with um, the, the the development of these tight ends. I for the I don't I don't think we see a lot of four wide, unless you count G Scott as unless it's like a, a third and long, you'll see a four wide, um, or if like G Scott is split out wide from the tight end position. Um, both well, both Wilson and Day have said at one point or another that they want to have a a tight end out there basically at all times because just based for no other reason than it makes it difficult to run. It makes it well, uh, a little too predictable. So they like to have a tight end back there whenever I, they can. I mean, Gingland said it best here that um, Ruckert, Ruckert was a glorified receiver, though. But and, and, the, and these tight ends that we have, these tight ends we have right now, they're going to be more of a blocking tight end. So are you, except you have more of a, when you have more of a, a a passing down, are you still going to put a a tight end out there that might not be as well known to be a receiving tight end like Ruckert? Or are you willing to put someone from this deep wide receiver group that we have? I, I think packages and matchups are important. Because... If you put G Scott out there and G Scott's a tight end and maybe as a result, the defense doesn't f- send an extra corner out there. Cause if you send another wide receiver out there, you take G Scott off the field and replace him with a wide receiver that might encourage the defense to take a tight end, or excuse me, take a linebacker off the field and put a corner out there. But if you leave G Scott out there and then split G Scott out wide, Now you're getting a better matchup because now you are putting a linebacker in space and they need to keep that extra linebacker out there instead, because with G Scott, he could also in theory be right up against the left tackle and blocking and which the, so this is what they're talking about. Like always having a tight end out there. It gives them an advantage in the running game. If for no other reason than it just has them be a little less predictable in their packages. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Yeah, no, no, it definitely does. So just, just a different mindset going into this year. You don't have, I really like don't I said, feel don't like have... it's going to be that different to be honest. All right. I, I mean, right. It, I think the only, I don't know if Ohio state has a do it all tight end the way they had in Ruckert last year. And, and Ruckert definitely was wide receiver leaning but he was definitely still a big bodied tight end. Right. Um, I mean, yeah. He was six, six, um, four, what would I say? Two forty nine there. Yeah. Still, still not a, not a lengthy, um, receiver. That's what, that's what Jared said. He was, he had some built to him. Right. But I guess the, the point I'm making is that Ohio state's tight ends feel a little specialized at the moment. Uh, you know, Royer, is your blocker um, 
G. Scott is your wide receiver. Stover is going to be more of a blocker. You know, it's it, it is what it is as far as that goes. Like they they don't have like a balanced tight end at the moment. Unless Joe Joe Royer is a surprise weapon that I'm not ready for. Uh, what was Ryan Day's biggest concern entering the spring? Um, putting in a new defense is obviously a big concern, uh, but then he goes on to praise Knowles and his teaching style, so on and so forth. Um, he says the offensive line is also a concern. Getting continuity and depth is a concern there. Uh, I think they'll reach. Con I think they, I think they'll reach continuity. I I feel like we're very close, and uh, I might jump back down. Uh, Kyle, if you want to jump back down in the notes, Kevin Wilson gives some clarity on. I think it's maybe the the very last entry in the notes. Um, uh, as far as like their starting five, I feel like they probably have their starting five in place. Um, depth is still a concern yep. for me. Um, Ryan Day uh, even goes on to say here, you know, what do you want to see from the offensive line? And Ryan Day says, you want to find five guys, then six, then seven, then eight. And right now, I feel like Ohio State probably has their five. I feel like they probably have their sixth. But I don't know if I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's a seven. Um, yeah. So so Kevin Kevin Wilson did did say here just jumping ahead here so that they're going to be good inside with Whipler and uh, Donovan Jackson right now, Donovan Jackson at left guard, Matt Jones at right guard. Um, the thought being, the thought being that if they ever need to move Jackson to left tackle, he'd already be on that side of the field and be used to it. Wow. It's almost like I said the exact same thing on the podcast last week. <laughs> Set myself up for that one. Um, <laughs> Uh, Gangland says, I think they have seven. Who would you say is the seventh? Gangland. Cause I don't know, like, especially, I don't, I don't, I don't know that they have, cause look, if something happens to one of the tackles, I feel like Donovan Jackson becomes the new tackle. And then Vamahi probably takes over at left guard would be my assumption at this point. I don't know who number seven is right now. I think Vamahi's number six. Um, I I don't know because, like I said, essentially Donovan Jackson's the backup tackle, and Vamahi, and then I can't remember his name. Listen, is he really the seventh guy if you can't remember his name? That's all I'm saying. Is he really the seventh guy if you can't remember his name? Um. The, I don't know, looking through here, there's a lot of guys with a lot of potential. <laughs> of course, Gangland. Um, they have a lot of potential here. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the potential is young. That's that that's the huge drawback here. Um, you know, you want guys like George Fitzpatrick to come along, but he's, he's a freshman at this point. Uh, maybe Ben Chrisman takes a takes a step up as in his second year. Um, there's a lot of guys who uh, Zen Mikowski also entering his second year, a lot of really good high potential guys. Um, the only, like the unfortunate part for Ohio state right now is that they're all a bunch of inexperienced second year players at this point or, or freshmen. Um, you want them you want them, you, you, there's a lot of guys who could be number seven. I just don't know that one of them has made themselves number seven yet. I think we know who one through five is, and I think we know who number six is. Yep. 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 Uh, let's see. One more thing I want to talk about here. Um, talking about the running backs here. Trevion Henderson. Um, Day says that Henderson has the potential to be as good as anybody in the country. He's a more confident player now, very serious, more experienced, and has things he wants to get done this spring. Has a good voice and sets the standard in the building. Being a running back in, in this spring can be a challenge because there isn't a lot of tackling, 
but there's still pass protection and those things that he's done well with. And that's one thing that we've talked about with really any true freshman too. It's how well can a running back sit in the pocket and be able to take a hit from a linebacker or a crashing um, corner on a blitz there to give your quarterback some more time. And and I, th- I think if Anderson can really elevate his game with that, man, he, he's going to be a high draft pick when he's done. <laughs> he's probably a high draft pick already, if we're being real. Um, uh, going back to the tight ends real quick, uh, someone asked Ryan Day how he felt about the tight ends. Uh, he says that he thinks that they're getting better. It's the same group mine as Jeremy Ruckert. He reminds us of Mitch Rossi, which is nice because Kyle and I forgot to bring up Mitch Rossi. Uh, he's he's out for the spring. He's hurt. Um, but yeah, he, he basically just says they need to find a starter, which again, like is kind of what we're talking about. They don't have like a one guy who's like the general like general purpose tight end. They have a bunch of specialty guys right now, but he says that they're not worried about packages. Uh, he says that'll come in the, in the, uh, that'll come in the preseason camp. Yep. All right. Um, all right. A lot of things about the wide receivers here, but I want to save that for the second half of the episode here. Jerry. Yeah. Let's, let's go back to, uh, we we're already talking a little bit of offensive line. So I'm going to pull this quote here. Um, he was asked, there's been a lot of uh, concern. There's a lot of concern last year when, especially when Ohio state maybe wasn't getting a good push inside. Um, there was a lot of concern among Ohio state fans about like tackles playing guards. And if that was a bad thing or not. Uh, and that, that question was essentially asked to him. Um, and he said, uh, Thayer Munford will end up playing guard or tackle in the NFL. And Paris Johnson was fine last year. So he doesn't think, Uh, It was a huge impediment, he says, but in a perfect world, you'd like uh, the offensive line to be a little more squared away. So uh, Ryan Day, apparently uh, not a concern. Anyone who's like, I don't like having tackles at guards. Well, too bad, because Ryan Day doesn't think it's a problem. And of course, they have Donovan Jackson playing guard this year with plans to have him play tackle next year. Now, that being said, he was recruited essentially as a guard slash tackle. Like that this, there was even consternation about the, you know, among the recruiting services, if he was a guard or a tackle, uh, which by the way, he's a tackle. I'm just going to go ahead and say this. He's a tackle. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, he's only... <laughs> and only only in basketball in the offensive line can you say someone's only 64. But he's only 64. He's a short king at 64. Um but here's the thing. At tackle being you don't actually have to be tall. That's that's a bit of a misnomer. You have to be long. They they want to have tackles who are tall not because they're tall but because they have long arms because those two things typically go together. Dude has a seven foot wingspan. It's fine. Stop worrying about it. He's a tackle. Yeah. He has the wingspan of someone who is seven foot. It's fine. (laughs) Don't worry about that. Six, four. He'll do. He'll be fine. All right, Jared, let's do it. Let's do a quick ad break here. And then we'll get into uh, some of the other questions from, or some of the answers from Day and Wilson. All right. Uh, this episode of the Sloopcast is still brought to you by the Spit Ballin' Podcast. There's no G in that. I'm telling you at the front of the ad read this time. Uh, we here at the Sloopcast are thrilled to be finally talking about some baseball with our new sponsors, the Spit Ballin' Podcast. Uh, we know we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the world for Ohio State, but baseball is currently booming, and you have found your new favorite MLB pod with the Spitballing Podcast. Uh, take a listen to the Spitballing Podcast by our very own Sloop Cat Austin uh, and his buddy Reed. Don't forget about Reed. Is it Reed Carico? No, it isn't. But maybe it is. You have to listen to find out. It's not. It's not. Uh Reed is a lifetime baseball fan. Uh, Just like here, there will be shenanigans. 
Uh, but there will also be unbiased MLB coverage from someone who's grown up around the game as well as someone who is brand new to the game. Uh, the Spitzballing Podcast is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever the hell it is you can find podcasts. Which is, if you're listening to this, you you at least know one place where you can find podcasts, right? So whatever app you're in right now, just search Spitballing Podcast. Remember, there's no G in that. See, I did it at the front and the back because I'm professional. Uh, there's no G in there. Uh, and just search Spitballing Podcast. I'm sure you'll find it. All right, Kyle, what... Where, where, are we, where are we going now? Uh, probably everybody's favorite position, the wide receivers. Of how, <laughs> how still incredibly how deep they are in that in that wide receiver group there. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find the first question here. Oh boy, where are you at, buddy? <laughs> Sorry, my my thing refresh, and I'm trying to find out. Apologize. It's all good. Uh, uh, I do like this. Ryan Day was, in fact, asked how he felt about the wide receiver depth. Drum roll, please. How do you feel about the wide receiver depth, Ryan Day? Kyle. The exact quote is, "I feel good about it." So in case anyone was worried, <laughs> no, no, no offense. No offense to whoever asked that question, but duh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Okay, well, it, it's hard talking about the wider receivers <clears throat> when you don't, when you, um, if you don't mention the quarterbacks as well here too. Um. Yeah, they were they were saying here about um, C.J. Stroud had a couple of great throws. Um, one of the practices, um, like that last touchdown he had to uh, J.S.N. in the Rose Bowl, um, said that Stroud needs to get louder, a little louder and more assertive. But he's improving on that. Uh, a lot of the re receivers are making plays. Um, so far in the spring here. But yeah, kind of echoing, echoing like what Jared said. You you lose two essentially first round wide receivers, but yet Ohio State can plug in guys like JSN and Harrison Jr. and Fleming and Ibuka. Going to be fine. Yeah. Uh, so uh, sticking on CJ Stroud, uh, how much? The question asked: How much has CJ Stroud grown grown in the spring? Uh, this was uh, actually to Kevin Wilson. I almost forgot to say that. Uh, he sees things visually so well. Uh, when you're good that early, uh, as a coach, you have to make sure the player doesn't get bored, but also uh, stick with his fundamental fundamentals. Uh, I think he's got a much higher ceiling than you've seen. Uh, he also says CJ Stroud's vision, um, some of it can be learned uh, and uh, through reps, but some guys have it and some guys don't. It's a gift that guys have sometimes. I think a lot of it is innately God-given. Uh, the more you know, the more you know you trust what a quarterback sees. Uh, there was a lot of this, by the way, in the in the press conference. Um, uh, he also says uh, C.A. Stroud had a couple throws today like the last touchdown to JSN in the Rose Bowl. Gushing. Absolute. The, between Ryan Day and Jim Knowles and Kevin Wilson, like gushing about where C.J. Stroud is right now with his vision, with his ability to read defenses, with his accuracy. Like, it's... It feels very palpable the way the coaching staff is talking about CJ Stroud right now. Um, be excited, everyone. Yes. I'm giving you permission to get your hopes up and be excited. Because to <laughs> me, there's literally nothing with strong arms and this and that's about quarterbacks. Nothing, nothing is more important, in my opinion, 
than the ability to read a defense and the ability to see the field. Mm -hmm. That to me is the difference between someone who is good and someone who is great. Someone who is great and someone who is elite. It's just the, the student of the game mentality. It's being able to read things exceptionally well. It's guys. He's, he's winning the Heisman this year. I, yeah, I'm just saying it. He's winning the Heisman next year. So speaking of, speaking of kind of going along with what you were saying, uh, both coaches were asked about their thoughts of uh, Jim Knowles uh, moving away from from the actual players into their new coach of Jim Knowles. Coach Day says that um, Knowles has a unique way of teaching. It's fun to sit in on some of those meetings. Uh, it's been it's been nice to be around it and see the different style. It's very efficient the way he teaches and Wilson kind of echoing that that too saying uh, he's done it long enough that he's got things he believes in. They are packaged in a way that he knows how to implement these things. They've done a good job, multiple fronts and movement. If you, if you make, they make you work mentally, but it's structurally sound and, and gap sound. Um, so yeah, they, they pretty much just echoing the same thing. They really like what they're seeing out of Knowles and out of all the press conferences that Jared and I have heard from him. Dude knows his exes knows. Listen to our the Monday's episode. We talk about Knowles and just how reminds, reminds Jared of like a high school teacher. Yeah. Uh, gangland in the live chat, uh, says, uh, Kevin Wilson saying that he can't, and by he, he means Kevin, uh, read the defense like a quarterback during that in- interview was funny to me. Yeah, it was. He goes, I, cause he just says like, I'm a, he goes, I, I see things up front. I don't see things like the quarterback. He was just, again, when he was gushing about the way CJ, uh, Stroud sees the field, um, Let's see. Uh, didn't you say that about Fields too? I think Fields could have won the Heisman had 2020 not been 2020. Like at the end, of, he only had six games. Like you, you, you just you have to throw away 2020 as far as any like traditional predictions and stuff like that goes. Uh, you've always told us the Heisman doesn't matter. It doesn't. That doesn't change the fact that he's going to win it. I didn't say. I didn't say it mattered. I just said he was going to win it. Unless it's a Buckeye success to the moon. It still doesn't matter. It's still a BS award. Yeah. But if there's something to win, win it. All right. Last thing here. We'll get into some questions here, Jared. Uh, It's inevitable during the springtime transfer portal always comes up here uh wilson had to make sure i make sure i had the right guy here Uh, wilson um was asked about um if he was concerned about losing guys in the transfer portal um he says that it's yeah you always got to um regardless of position but it's hard to leave ohio state because guys get developed here guys who are going to be good are the ones who embrace the grind yeah and i also think People always look at like, oh, he, he left, which is bad, but here's the thing. Obviously you want guys that, that, that goes without saying, but like, I feel like a guy like jet, one of the reasons why Jack Miller stayed committed to Ohio state after CJ Stroud committed to CJ, uh, committed to Ohio state in the same recruiting class is because these guys now know ahead of time that they have the freedom of the transfer portal and the one-time eligibility waiver. They know this now. So this is a huge benefit to like known quarterback gurus like Ryan Day. Because even if they transfer, even if they're like, oh, well, even if I don't win, I could still be Joey Burrow. And even if, and if Jack Miller has a great year at Florida, if he has a great career at Florida, 
You think Ryan Day isn't telling the next great quarterback, high school quarterback in the living room? Hey, listen, the guys who left here, the guys who I had a chance to coach for a couple years, and then they went to play college football somewhere else, they were also successes. Mm -hmm. Come spend time with me for two years. Two years. I, I only ask two years, two viewers, two. I only ask two years of you. And if after that you want to leave, you'll leave twice the quarterback that you walked in as. That's my that's my pitch if I'm Ryan Day. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else before we get to the questions? Um man, there's a lot. Uh, there was conversations to Juan Jones about leaving early for the NFL. He wanted to come back because he wanted to be a first or second rounder, which I feel like he's probably a second rounder unless he gets a lot better at pass protection. Um, and it's not to say he's bad at pass protection because he's not, but you have to be an elite pass protector to get that first round offensive tackle spot. And, and I think it's as far as like the pass protection goes, I think it's telling that they left him at right tackle and Paris Johnson got the left tackle spot. That's all I'm saying. All right. Let me, let's go ahead and answer some questions here. All right. Uh, <laughs> I said this on Mondays, but we're answer it here from, uh, what, is he in the chat here? Uh, uh nope, no, he probably left. not. Uh, <laughs> Nomad or goes by Odin's wrath now. How much more we know about the starters for the offensive line after April 16th? Well, there you go. Kyle already answered it. Oh, I actually, Kevin Wilson answered it, but Kyle told you what he said. Um, Luke Whipler, Donovan Jackson, um, Donovan Jackson at left guard, Matt Jones, uh, Luke Whipler center. I don't know why I tried to read it. <laughs> Donovan Jackson left guard, Matt Jones at right guard, uh, and then we already know who the tackles are. Um, so yeah, we we know we know who the five are. I'll tell you right now, even though I don't think any, I don't none of the coaches said it. Enoch Vamahi is going to be your your sixth guy. I already explained how that all worked earlier in the show. Um, and I think they're still looking for, I think they'd really like to have like a dedicated backup tackle. Zen Mikowski is in that running. Uh, there's a lot of good second year freshman offensive linemen. That's real hard for the, for it's real hard for a freshman to maybe crack the top seven uh, or six, like seven might be it, but yeah, like, uh, George Fitzpatrick, among others. Yeah, it, it's Ben Chrisman, second year. I, I think there are definitely guys who can who can fill that spot. Yep. Uh, let's see. We, we, we gave an answer for the defensive side, so let's give an answer for the offensive side. Uh, player this spring that would be the, oh, I forgot he was on the on the team guy. Um... Again, so Austin did clarify that he means for the casual fan, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I think the two people I would look to would be G. Scott and Evan Pryor. And maybe Bob. Maybe Bob uh, and as Bob. Well. I, I, yes, I, I, Bob's actually the right crap. Kyle's right. It's Bob. All right. Yeah, uh, Kyle, Kyle got it. The Mario McCall's gone, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, Gangland. <laughs> He, yes. He, after he, after he 10 gone. years, he's he's gone now. Uh, Austin asks, given the animal representation to each of the six wide receivers, we think will be the main rotation. Animal representation <laughs> to the six wide receivers. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume that the six wide receivers are Bob, Abuka, Fleming, uh, Ballard, JSN, Marvin Harrison Jr. So pretty much... Anybody who's not an incoming freshman. Yeah. And and has a scholarship. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
Uh, <laughs> Gangland says a mech is a panther. JSN also a panther. <laughs> um, Bob is a racehorse. Uh, Fleming is. I'll come back to Fleming. Ballard's a cheetah. Abuka's a crane. I don't know what it means either. A uh, crane? A crane, like a bird. I, I know, I know, but a crane? I, 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 I don't have to justify my answer to you. <laughs> um, JSN, Lord, I don't know. Like, almost like a, isn't what what animal can move in four directions simultaneously? Whatever that whatever that is. Uh, a shark? No, nah, man, he's he's moving too quickly for that. You know, you know who JSN is? JSN is not a bird. He's an entire flock of birds. You ever see the birds and the giant and they're all moving simultaneously through the air because they're all in one big mass of birds? Somehow synchronized, you could also say fish. They do the same thing. That's what JSN is. He's an entire flock of birds somehow flying simultaneously in the same direction, yet in different directions at the same time. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a gazelle. He is a gazelle, yes. He is a gazelle. Thank you for stopping at my TED Talk. <laughs> Have a good <laughs> evening. Was that all of them? I think that's all of them. Okay. All right. uh, I think that's it. That is all the questions. Uh, did we give one for Fleming? If not, he's a panther. I'm stealing your answer for that one. Gangland says he's not sure we picked one for Fleming. Uh, I'll steal your answer and say he's a panther. How about that? Lazy. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh, Fleming is a greyhound. Hmm. Maybe not as good of an answer. <laughs> you know, I I had already picked... There were already all of these big cat answers. There were already all of these big cat answers. Like, I, I didn't want to do that again. All right, Kyle, was that the last question? That's it. That's oh, it for today's God. episode. <laughs> Come join the <laughs> Sloopcast Discord server where we have... Uh, we we have discussions like this all the time, actually. Like it's 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 part football, part shenanigans, whole, but then like three more parts shenanigans. So that that's our Discord server. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, if you're looking for a, a a less toxic, severely less like we we keep a we keep a tight rein on things, um, a, a considerably less toxic. Uh, place to hang out as opposed to a uh, typical college football message board or Twitter. Uh, come, come check out the discord server. It's a lot of fun. Um, I unlimited bacon and no game unlimited games, but no games. What do you, what do you, okay. I don't know what you're talking about. I thought you were making some sort of bacon joke about this. Listen, there's no free bacon. I'm sorry. It's a digital space. I, there's no way for me to deliver bacon to you through the phone. If I could, I wouldn't, that would be a premium feature. That would just be for the sloop cats. I, cause the bacon's expensive. Have you seen the prices of bacon? And that's not happening. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, talked about basketball last episode. I'm going to stick with football this year this episode here uh grandson of archie griffin nice deontay griffin commits to ohio state as a preferred walk-on as a db he's uh he's a senior at lima senior high school up in good old northwest ohio now is that is that him joining this spring class of 2022 yeah. um well i would i would 
I would assume it, it is the spring, not the spring, but the fall. I did. Did I not say what I said? You said spring. You said oh. spring. Did I say spring? <laughs> All right. You yeah. Did. Fall. 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 Um. Yeah. So obviously yeah. not the spring camp because that's already started. Uh. But yeah, I, I assume he must like preferred walk-ons don't commit a year ahead of time as a preferred walk-on. That's not a thing that happens. Um. Yeah. So that's awesome and amazing, and I hope he surprises everyone who didn't give him a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Of course, that being said, if, if I'm up on Ohio state policy, I believe his, his grandfather is employed by the university or do you have to be a parent? <laughs> well, his parent, his, his dad, um, Andre, uh, played running back Ohio state from 98 to 01. Right, but then I'm talking about for the fact that Archie works for the university, which means that uh, uh, Gangland, who would know, uh, says no, it's family too. So he he's got his scholarship, just just because mm -hmm. Dad works for the university. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's it, Jared. That's all I got for today's episode. All right, we played Playing to Vapors uh, on Monday, so we'll play Playing to Vapors again on Tuesday. I haven't picked out a song yet, but you'll like it. You'll like it, I promise. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is for the fourth straight episode, Playing to Vapors.